皆さん、こんばんは。Good evening, everyone.、Uh, welcome to the second session for the summer se semester, second offering of、uh, Intro to Japanese Language and Culture, University of Reddit.、Uh, this is Robo Sensei, your teacher.、I'm、glad to see、um, that a lot of you made it back for the second time around. And I'm、um, really excited about. Getting diving into some, some、uh, really good material here today. So,、uh, there's a little bit of confusion about the IRC chat because the top channel topic isn't set to anything. And、um, I made this channel last time around and I tried to regain administrative control over it, but I think they deleted it or something because I didn't use it for six months. But、um, I'm probably going to. Uh, create a new channel, and because I, I, I think I'm going to change the name, but、um, so look for the link to change in the sidebar. If you have the link bookmarked for the IRC room,、um, just keep, an eye, or keep in mind that it's going to change for next time, and I'll have, administ I'll have administrative powers and I'll be able to put the link as the、uh, topic and you know, boot all of you people who are acting unruly since there's so many of you. But anyway.、Um, Thank you for posting the link in the chat. And、uh, again, keep an eye out for the link to change、um, for next time. It's good to see Casticat. How's it going? I、uh, hope you're watching the live stream. That's the TA there.、Um, when we have、uh, the real IRC chat room up,、um, he or she will be an admin too. So、uh, if you have any questions, please direct them as far as the language goes.、Um, Please、uh, direct the questions to Casticat or Spencer's not here yet. He should be here, but he's not here yet. But anyway,、um, last time there w a s a few people asking me questions directly, like through PMs on the chat, and、um, that's not really a big deal or anything, but it was a little, a little distracting, and I, you know, I'm not able to answer them really because I'm、um, trying to focus on, on lecturing. So.、Um, Yeah, if you could just go ahead and you know, chat in the chat room, in the general chat room, with any kind of language specific questions. And、uh, if you have any administrative questions, you can just PM me on Reddit and I can answer them that way. So、uh, thank you to Tricon for posting the homework from session one. I、uh, kind of needed to stay on top of that a little bit better. So、um, that being said, let's go ahead and go right into.、Uh, Into talking about the homework a little bit. I hope that a lot of you got to, a chance to read the.、Um, <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear that. That's my daughter being put to bed, but、um, she's whining in Japanese. But、uh, I, hope, I hope that a lot of you got a chance to read the Wikipedia article on Japan. And、uh, actually, track on. Thank. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear that or not.、Um, That, actually, the link you posted to、uh, the Wikipedia article about the language, Japanese language was, was interesting. I don't think I've ever read that before, which is kind of sad because it has a lot of really, really useful and interesting information for people who are interested in the linguistic aspect of things.、Um, it really breaks down a lot of things. And a few of the things we're going to talk about today,、um, as far as the phonetic alphabet is concerned. So thanks for posting that. I really appreciate that. And,、uh, you know, it's really nice to see people get involved and, and be proactive and, and、um, helping people out. And, And kind of hopefully the community can kind of slowly grow and we can study together and learn from each other. It's you know, a lot more、uh, it's a lot more fun when, when you have people to talk to about it and, and to learn together with. So, again, thanks, thanks for posting that, Tricon. I'm assuming I'm pronouncing your name right. But、uh, you said, yeah, we can. I'm guessing you're saying, yeah, we can hear my, my daughter. Crying up there. So I promise we're not abusing her or anything. She's just three years old. So that's kind of how they roll. But anyway,、um, I think we're get, we got a little bit of. Oh, no, never mind. Okay. So、uh, hopefully you read、uh, the article on prefectures in Japan, too.、Uh, if you didn't know already, prefectures in Japan are basically states, like American states.、Um, there's, I don't know, something like 50 or so. And then there's. Tokyo, which is kind of like a metropolis, and then、uh, Sapporo, which is like its own kind of state, and then Kyoto and Osaka, which are the two second biggest cities basically 
in Japan. They're part of the Kansai area, and um, they're they're considered like their own kind of metropolises too. So um, the biggest cities in Japan basically have their own kind of designation. It's kind of like a Washington D.C. or something like that. So um, it's an interesting study to learn about, in my opinion, to learn about the geography of Japan and. Um, you know, I didn't really talk very much last time about, because uh, I took it out, I decided to take it out, but I kind of thought, I ended up thinking that was a bad idea, but, you know, the, the geography of Japan really is important to know because it really shapes um, the culture, and can you guys see that fly buzzing around? That's really nice. Um, it really shapes the culture, and along with the culture, or the language, because, you know, they really are uh, always tied so closely together. Uh, you really can't be fluent in any language, I don't think, without being fluent in the culture as well. And that's especially the case with Japanese in Japan because they're just so intertwined. And, you know, when the, with this, the way the geography is, it's so, you know, so, so areas that where people can inhabit are so small that, you know, everything's really, really close together and tiny and tight. And so, obviously, you know, you see it with Japanese electronics and uh, engineering and stuff like that, that everything's really compact and efficient, and that's just all kind of a, a byproduct of, of the geography, and um, it, it kind of spills over into the language as well, and it, when you really get into kind of in-depth study of the language, you'll, you'll see that uh, is a very, very obvious thing, and it's really interesting um, because it's so unique and so cultured, but so yeah, you know, um, just another thing to learn about in, with Japan is the prefectures and the geography and stuff like that. I, um, if you're in the kanji, it's always fun to learn uh, the prefectures kanji, and uh, hopefully one day you can go to a bunch of the prefectures in Japan and, and visit them. And um, you know, you can always impress Japanese people by being able to to read read the prefecture kanji or be able to write the prefecture kanji, especially. So, or even just name the prefectures really will impress Japanese people because some of them can't even do it. I don't know, but anyway. So um, today we're going to talk about two things. Uh, first, we're going to talk about class resources, which uh, is a really important topic, and it's really kind of the foundation for the class, which is a foundation for your future endeavors in studying Japanese. So um, my opinion, probably one of the most important lessons and uh, one of the most useful lessons, you know, kind of an uh, accumulation of my personal knowledge and experience of, of trying to learn Japanese and find things, um, you know, online, especially, obviously, since that's that's the forum here, you know, to help me learn. And, um, you know, so you guys are, I think you're really, um, I don't know, I'm not trying to brag, but it's, you know, it's, it's a really useful tool, I think, what we're about to learn here. And then uh, after that, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, hiragana, and we'll just really just... Uh, uh, the Japanese phonetic system, or the Goju on, Goju on, uh, and just kind of go over the alphabet and the sound system, and you know a little bit about what we talked about last week, and hopefully what you guys already know because you've been studying for uh, the homework assignments. So let's uh, let's go ahead and go into the resources. And first, I want to I want to tell you that. Um, over the past number of years, I've been collecting kind of links of useful websites to go to, and there's a list, a, a public Google document, just kind of like the syllabus that you can go to, and it has all these links that I've kind of found, and uh, a lot of them have come from the uh, Learn Japanese subreddit, so i got to give credit where it's due, and, you know, obviously Reddit is, in my opinion, the best place on the Internet to find uh, you know, useful things, and to find people who know about useful things in other places on the internet, and um, so a lot of the stuff that I found there has come from Reddit, and so I definitely got to give uh, Learn Japanese Sub a lot of credit there because uh, they are awesome. You got to keep your eye on that because you know, and in, in the daily threads, there's always a good link popping up. Um, there are some some questionable ones and stuff, especially when you get down to like the really low level beginner links. Um, you know. Being, I guess being exposed to the language in any way when you're a true, a really fresh beginner is good, but, um, you know, it's not always really high-quality stuff there, but, you know, whatever, it is uh, it is what it is. But anyway, so I will post a link to that document uh, probably in the sidebar after this lecture or maybe tomorrow morning, so that way you can have access to that. And, you know, it's, it's categorized. The list, 
I also want to say the list is still definitely a work in progress. The format isn't really pretty. Um, some of the links might even be dead. I haven't checked them all in like six months. So if you find a dead link, definitely let me know or post it in the sub. Um, you know, if you find some, if you think that there's, if you have a suggestion, definitely let me know and I can add it. I'm always happy to add it. It's basically like an open source document. I'm not claiming claiming it to be mine or anything like that. You know, it's for everybody to use. So, uh, you know, take a look at it. And and there's things about you know living in Japan, moving to Japan, obviously studying Japanese language, um, you know, studying for the Japanese language proficiency test, uh, you know meeting Japanese people online, uh, really anything you can imagine. Um, and actually one of the one of the things that I think I think it's a link on there, but um, I wanted to kind of share with you if you haven't heard of it, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, but it's basically like the the chat roulette or omegle of uh, Japan. And if you're not familiar with those, those are basically just like random chat rooms where you meet up with somebody you just connect and start chatting with a stranger, and sometimes it's a video chat. Um, and I like to kind of start off, basically start the class with this because um, I think it kind of, I hope that it will teach us uh, an important lesson. And so I'm going to go ahead and do a screen share here and switch over to uh, switch over to to the chatpad.jp, and if I can gather myself here. Okay, screen share, and here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the new chat button. And we're going to get connected to somebody here. And basically, I'm just going to tell them that I'm American and see how they react. I'm going to say, oh, ha, which is like kind of like Ohio, was I mas, like good morning, but it, it could just kind of be like a like a colloquial greeting, and us, us, that's pretty hard to translate, but it's just kind of like, hey, probably a male. I'm not surprising you usually run into males on these kind of things. I'm going to say doldai, which I don't even know if that's, that might be some local slang from my wife's hometown. And we'll see what he says here. Assuming this is a Japanese person. Ine, ine. So this is some good hiragana practice for you. Hiragana practice for you. Um, oh, this is all hiragana. So he's like, oh, that's cool or that's good. Uh, so I don't know. What should I say here? How about, ano, I'm going to say, hey, um, I'm an American, you know. Let's see what he says. And he's like, what? He did. He wrote that before I, before he saw me writing that I was an American. Can you guys see this? I wonder I'm going to zoom in a little bit. He's like, well, okay, so, <laughs> so what? I'm like, well, I don't know, just whatever. Ma, that's neat. He said, so de dos tande. It's like, and, and I'm just like, well, eh, it's whatever. I'm gonna say I'm gonna, t I'm teaching a live Japanese class. All right. Can't type Japanese in Japanese. I'm like, well, I'm teaching. This is well, I'm showing this to my. Well, I'm I'm teaching a live Japanese class while I do this. And I'm showing my students uh, the chat here. A Japanese person. 
a real Japanese person. <laughs> Nihonjino, so uh, you can see the uh, this is Japan and a person. He's like, well, okay, how much Japanese can I use? Or he's basically like asking, what kind of level of Japanese are are the students? Dokomare nihongo wo tsukatte ii kana? I wonder how much Japanese can I use? I'll say uh, basic. I say I'm gonna have to go soon, so say something. Mosugu. <laughs> I have to go soon. So can you say something? Because I'm about to leave. He said, Are you about to leave? I said, Yeah. Sorry. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hopefully you recognize that. That's English Japanese. <laughs> it's like okay, get the hell out of here. Alright. So Anyway, um, that was um, not not really didn't really go as I planned, but obviously that's totally random and I have no control over that. But um, what I was hoping was actually the last last session it worked out exactly uh, how I was planning it, which was that as soon as I told them I was American, they were like, "Oh, you've got a huge." Penis, right? <laughs> and uh, it was it was really funny, and that's actually what I was expecting because it's like you know a random internet chat, and that's what people do on those kind of things. And um, you know, it I wanted to just kind of show you guys that it doesn't really matter, you know, what language you're speaking or where you are in the world, people are the same. And just kind of emphasizing my point last time, and that. You know, Japanese is just a language, and as long as you're human, you're going to be okay. As long as you, you know, just try your hardest and put your time in. And uh, that way, you know, or I, I just want to kind of expose you guys to just, you know, a raw, a raw Japanese person and show you that, you know, there's nothing mystifying about it. It's just a person, and they're just people just like us. So, uh, you know, just um, don't, don't worry too much about it. Don't let it stress you out too much. So, yeah, <laughs> well, compared to, sorry, I'm seeing the chat, people are talking about, I didn't know we're known for that, but, yeah, you know, a lot of times when you meet young Japanese men, especially, they'll, and you're American, they'll, uh, they'll comment on how you probably have um, a well-endowed um, nether regions. So, anyway, let's move on. <laughs> so... On to the resources. So that's one good resource. You know, you can kind of get on there and, and speak in a really, really colloquial environment in a live, you know, with a little bit of time. You don't have to react to somebody speaking. So a lot of times it's a lot easier to read something something than have time to process it than to hear it because you only have one chance to hear it as opposed to being able to read it over and over and dissect it. So, uh, But you're speaking with, like, a live person, and obviously it's a, you know, probably a younger person, kind of Internet savvy, so someone that maybe you're a little bit more um, on the same you know, you kind of see eye to eye with, or at least in the same age group. So, uh, you know, it's a really good tool to kind of get on there and talk to people, and you don't have anything, you know, there, there's nothing that you have writing on it. It's just you can cut it off at any time. It's totally random and anonymous, so that's pretty cool. Um, thank you, Castacat, for answering those questions. I appreciate it. Yes, un, un does mean yes, or 
um, and agree, you know, it's it's a statement to express agreement. So let's go ahead and um, dive into the uh, into the uh, resources of the class and. The first one I want to mention is and show you is the dictionary that I use online. And uh, the dictionary, you know, I think I told you this guy, you guys this last time, but the dictionary I used for most of my like first ten years of me studying Japanese was you know a paper dictionary. And I love that thing. It's you know I have a lot of fond memories with it, but it's a really big pain in the butt because it's this huge kanji thick kanji dictionary and. Uh, it takes forever to look stuff up, and you know, it, it's. I guess you, it's, there's something to be said for learning it through that, but it's extremely inconvenient and uh, inefficient, in my opinion. So, with the advent of the internet and cool websites, uh, obviously there's been some really cool electronic dictionaries popping up. And also, another way you can use it, get a dictionary is just to get a, a handheld electronic dictionary, which is really common. Um, you know, see, so it's almost like um, you can basically fit them in your pocket and. Um, those are really useful to carry around with you. Nowadays, since they're smartphones, you know, you obviously you can kind of replace that with a smartphone. I haven't found any really, really good Android apps for Jap English to Japanese dictionaries. So if you find one, let me know. But really, I haven't seen any. Um, might be a good a good uh, project to develop if you're a developer. But um, obviously, there's there's probably plenty of of Japanese to English dictionaries, and I'm pretty sure you can just Search on the Android market for things in Japanese, the Japanese language, and get you know things from Jap um, you know apps that are that were developed in Japan or by Japanese people. But anyway, so the main dictionary that I use, though, obviously being in front of a desktop computer most of the time, I'm I'm studying is uh, a dictionary called Tangorin. Tangorin, and I'll go ahead and screen share that so you can see it. Um, where are we at here? Where are we at here? Sorry. Useful links. Screen share. There we go. Okay, so. Oh, didn't work. Gosh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm a little bit of technical difficulty here. Okay, so this is, and if you guys can't uh, see anything on the screen, if it's too small, then a lot of times the chat will be down, you know, not on my main window. So hit send me a PM or something, and that'll send me a little alert. Um, but this is the uh, the Japanese dictionary that I use, Tangorin. Tangorin, and that's just. Here's the kanji for it. That's just a, a kanji that whoever made this website made up, and his name is uh, somewhere around here. But um, this dictionary, in my opinion, is really freaking awesome. I haven't found one to, to uh, rival it. And really, almost all the Japanese dictionaries, I think all of them on the English side of it, use the same uh, database of information. And that comes from the... Uh, Another thing on that's on the useful links page, which is the WWJDIC, the J World Wide Web Japanese Dictionary something consortium. It's like basically this guy. It's actually the guy who wrote, uh, who authored and published my paper kanji dictionary. Um, put it all into a database, and that's what basically what most of the all of the um, you know dictionaries online use is that they access that database. As far as I know. Um, I'm not 100% sure about that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So I'm pretty sure, and I'm pretty sure that this dictionary uses that because uh, you can go if if there's certain dictionary, you know, markings or classifications or things like that that you don't understand on this website, um, you can go to the WWJDIC project, and there's a, a user guide that'll show you, you know, what all the markings are. So it's very useful. To, to be able be familiar with the URLs for both of those for both of these websites in tandem, and again they're they're all on the uh, useful links document, so you don't have to worry about like writing them down or anything. But um, but anyway, so uh, first thing I would recommend is that you make an account here, and that way you can create 
vocabulary lists, and you can categorize them into different things like based off time period or subject matter or whatever it might be. And, uh, you know, so that way you can kind of keep track of, of the vocabulary that you're wanting to, to learn. And um, my, my name here is Maji Dei, which means like for real or legit or the truth uh, in Japanese. And you can see I have some vocabulary lists here. Um, you know, I have some IT. I haven't really added a lot as much as I would like. I should use it a lot more than I than I do. I should take my own recommendation. But uh, you know, th there's a few vocabularies over here. But um, so obviously, right here you have the search bar, and in the search bar you can search in um, English. You could say English, and you, it's going to bring up um, you know the different results. So right here, ego. Eagle is the word for English. You could also, if you heard the word eagle, you could search for eagle in uh, Romanized characters or Romaji, eagle, and that's going to bring up the same results. And obviously, you could type in kanji, eagle, and that's going to bring up the same results. So there's there's a few ways to get to this. Um, now, let's say you. I know that we haven't really covered kanji, so some of, this is kind of the part where I was talking about where some of you may get a little bit lost or feel like I'm jumping ahead or jumping around, but I know a lot of you out there do know what kanji is, so uh, if you're totally lost here, just try to kind of pay attention and um, you know maybe rewatch the video once, once after we go over the kanji, but if you're looking up kanji, uh, you can, th these tabs are just to search by types of words. So like, let's say you want to look for the word ego. Like if you saw in general, on the general tab, and you search for ego um, in Romaji, the, well, I thought it, it came up last time. That's weird. Well, anyway, it's just basically like if you want to search for just the kanji of a word, um, or, you know, an example sentence or kanji and names, you can click on these tabs. But the general tab will bring up all results. So um, that's the most useful one. And, um, but let's say, you know, you don't know the pronunciation and you can't copy and paste the character. Like, let's say you're reading it out of a newspaper or you are reading it from an image online and you can't copy the image text. Um, you can go to this multi-radical search button over here. And I'm just going to hop over and chat real quick and make sure you guys are good here. Um, somebody's asking me to post the useful links doc, so I'll post that here. Just give me a sec. Um, Is my screen share turned off now for some reason? Why did that happen? Oh, it's because I switched. Okay. So, sorry. Let me go back to screen share on that. Sorry. All right. So, um, the, the useful links should be up in the chat now, so check it out. But... Um, so say you say you have you know a kanji that you you don't know the pronunciation you don't know anything all just what it looks like other than just what it looks like you can come to the multi radical search and um, you can search by radical or just basically by for those of you who don't aren't familiar with the radical system just by basically the little the parts the different parts of the kanji so like um, like what we we're just looking for ego um, or I think it's sakamuri and I don't know. Sometimes it's kind of hard to <laughs> to use, but um, I think it's what's the bottom part. I don't know. That's a bad example. <laughs> so let's just look at the go part. Um, six six strokes. So these are the stroke counters. So like one strokes, two strokes, three strokes, four strokes. You learn a kanji that these are really important. Stroke counters really important to look up kanji. Um, and oh, seven strokes. So that and 
this should produce and then oh you can also do like this whether it's split left to right top to bottom encompassing or a singular block these are called skip patterns they're really important to find um, so we'll do this is the second part of the kanji if you recall this is what it looks like the second part here so you can see that this radical is on the left side and this little box down here is this box. So with those two radicals and saying that it's a split left to right kanji, we should have the results somewhere down here um, before too long. And for some reason it's giving me results that aren't what I'm looking for. That's awesome. Let's just try it with just this radical. So you can see all these kanji here have the same radical. And basically, so you're searching by the picture. And um, for whatever reason, it's you know not coming up as, a, as an early result. Because one thing that's kind of bad about this is it shows results of like the kanji plus other sounds with it. But anyway, not important. This is how you can search for kanji. And I promise you it's, it is efficient and very, very useful. So you know, familiarize yourself with it. Um, that's pretty much it for the for the dictionary. Obviously, there's a ton to learn. And oh, it looks like there's a little microphone too. That's pretty cool. Um, oh, it's asking me to speak now. Let's see if I can get it to work. Eagle. Oh, there it worked. Cool. In English, I've never even used that. That's awesome. Really cool. So you could even like record a sound from a you know a movie or something if you don't understand it and put it in there. Um, or obviously just speak. That's really cool. So uh, obviously that's tied to a Japanese voice recognition software because, um, well, it's Japanese, obviously. Dirt. You have some settings over here that can help beginners. Um, you know, you can highlight examples like that yellow disappears and appears. Also for beginners, this is really important or really useful is display furigana, display readings in kana. So above the kanji, or above the word here, you see where it says um, it has the the furigana above the word, and so you can read read it in Japanese above the the pronunciation in the Romanized alphabet. Unclick it and it takes it off. And um, so this box changes it from hiragana to romaji, which romaji is the uh, you know the, the American alphabet. And I always always highly recommend that you do not. Uh, use the English written system. Use the Japanese one. Otherwise, in my opinion, you're just you know kind of wasting your time. So uh, that's pretty much it for the dictionary. There's probably some other things I could talk about, but uh, you know that's kind of the gist of it. And I you know again I recommend you um, you know familiarize yourself with it and bookmark it and use it all the time because I use it constantly. I was using it today for you know, a couple hours and um, it's just absolutely, well obviously a dictionary is extremely important when you're um, learning foreign language. So another one of the, uh, moving on to, to another resource that I wanted to talk about is Dikai chan or Dikai kun and what those are are basically in browser dictionaries and I will show you an example here. Um, so basically, I mean, you can almost like speak no Japanese and use these, and basically understand kind of what people, what something is talking about, or what what a website is talking about. Talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my one of my favorite websites in Japanese, which is a website on uh, keigo or polite speech, also in the resources document, and show you how uh, this this browser extension works. These are browser extensions, Rikai Chan, Rikai Kun. I think Rikai Chan is Rikai Kun is Chrome and Nikai Chan is uh, Firefox. And basically so what we're seeing here is a Japanese website and you know all you have to do is just put your mouse over a word and uh, you have to turn the turn the extension on. Put put your mouse over a word and It'll highlight it and show you the definition, or one definition. It's not going to be in a really extensive definition like the, the, the dictionary website, but 
Um, it shows you quite a bit of information, especially if it's like an individual character like that. Um, and the other thing that this is really useful for is you, it's highlighting the text for you automatically, so you can just copy it right here. Just hit Control C, and then go over to your dictionary, Control V, paste it, and you have your you know you can look at more detailed information on it. So um, these these browser extensions are really really awesome and um, one of the best tools for for learning the language because um, you know well obviously you can almost just translate in real time and if you look at uh, the entries, the dictionary entries, you'll see that they're the exact same as the dictionary that we were just looking at. And again, it's because they all use that same database of information. So um, that's kind of good because it's got continuity, but it's also kind of bad because there's definitely some stuff lacking in those databases I found. And um, one day I kind of hope to develop, uh, hope to develop and add to that. Uh, myself, but there's definitely a lot of you know information that's lacking. But obviously, for beginners and intermediate and even advanced, tons of information that um, you know you know you'll never run out of information. But yeah, extremely useful tool here, Nikai Chan, Nikai Kun, and um, if I think those are in the useful links. But you know, you just go into your uh, Google Play or whatever, or the extension shop or whatever it's called, and, and search for it, and it's really easy to find and install. So. Highly, highly recommend you install that right away. Um, moving on to the next extremely, extremely important resource uh, is the Japanese keyboard. And that is the Windows-based keyboard, so you can type in Japanese. And... Um, Obviously, that's you know important to be able to to type entries into the dictionary and to be able to compose um, documents and do your homework and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, if you don't know how to get the Japanese keyboard on your computer, um, just Google search you know Japanese keyboard input, and you'll have like a million tutorials pop up on how to install it. It's pretty easy. Not very complicated, and uh, you definitely have to get that in order to to start studying Japanese. And um, you know, I don't know if I wasn't okay. I have my language bar up. Let me. I don't think that's. There's no way I could possibly screen share my language bar, but I'm going to give it a shot here. No. Hmm. I wonder if I do my desktop. Well, I guess we'll just have to leave it out as far as me showing you how I would use it. But um, I'm trying to see. Full screen. Maybe. Okay, let me know in the chat if you guys can see this. Um, you should be able to. And if not, just just let me know. Um, I don't think I can zoom in on this, unfortunately. But this is the Japanese keyboard, and um, kind of wait, waiting around in chat here to see if you guys can can see this or not. But. Um, I'm thinking you can because I saw it. But anyway, so you you can switch back and forth from uh, from Japanese to English on here and change the input of your keyboard. And um, I'm sure there's probably a couple other ones, especially if you're working on like a Mac. There's they have their own. But uh, okay, cool. You can see it. So a few of the useful tools on this, or I guess the way to use this. Um, is you type in the English characters, like let's say you want to type ah. Well, you say a, and it brings up ah. And that's the hiragana character, the phonetic alphabet. Now, let's say there's the con some kanji ah that, um, just tell me if it's too small and not worth it, just let me know. But um, let 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, we're running out of time here. So, create document. Okay, so let's say you want to type ah. Uh, so you hit ah, uh, and it's the and you hit enter, and that'll have the ah uh character. Let's say you want to do a kanji or a katakana. You hit spacebar, and that and then it'll bring up the most common usually kanji first. And if you want more options, you hit the spacebar again. And that'll bring up a scrolling option for you to pick the different kanji that you want or the different characters that you want. Okay, so um, you know if you want to type in, if you want you know a long, you can even type whole sentences in here and then hit spacebar, and it will uh, populate you know the whole the whole line with kanji. Um, also, there's some interesting tools here like you can. It actually has its own kind of character dictionary where uh, you can search by radical, you can search by um, stroke or uh, the amount of stroke stroke numbers one two strokes, and you can search by the I think it's the the Unicode index, and you can also write it in here, which is pretty cool. So if you're really having trouble finding a kanji, that would be what I would go to. And again, you just click on the kanji, and it'll auto-populate whatever field you're trying to type in. And um, you know, you have a keyboard function here. You can backspace, and you can even bring up the keyboard, um, you know, to type in manually. So, um, one of these days, I'm going to get around to posting a tutorial on how to install it. But it depends on your operating system. So it's just like. There's 10 different ways to teach somebody. So, you know, Windows 8, Windows 7, Windows Vista, Windows Vista, Windows XP, Windows XP Service Pack 3. Yeah, that, that Tofugu guide is going to be a good one. Whoever in the chat just posted it, um, Swalesk, thank you. So, yeah, obviously a really important, um, and you can do input mode as katakana, or you can even switch back to English here if you want to while keeping on the Japanese keyboard. So um, extremely important to use. So, also, um, really, just quick, quickly on on the uh, keyboard. For me, something that's extremely useful is to switch between English and Japanese. Is just Alt Shift, Alt Shift from English to Japanese. And by default, when you go to Japanese, the input mode is going to still be English. So to switch that to hiragana or Japanese, you hit. Um, Alt caps, Alt caps lock. Um, so Alt shift Japanese to English, and then Alt caps lock from English to in the Japanese keyboard from the Romaji input or from the English input to the Japanese input. So those are really really useful, as opposed to just um, you know switching back and forth with your mouse and going down there to this little teeny language bar to do it every time. It's really annoying. So. Um, All right, so also on Android uh, smartphones, I would recommend that the Japanese keyboard that you get is Shimeji. Shimeji. Uh, it's a Japanese, I believe it's a Japanese app. Um, you know, I've never used the Japanese or the Google um, keyboard, so I'll have to try that out and see, see how that goes. But Anyway, so yeah, Shimeji is the um, is the is the Android app for texting and, and searching and stuff in Japanese on your phone, and um, I don't think I have a link to that yet on the useful docs, so I have to add that. But uh, again, if you have any other recommendations like the Google one, I'll have to add that on there. Um, you know, we can put it on the the useful links document. And to answer your question, Swalesk, what I mean by Japanese input is um, I mean, I'm not sure what you're asking, but you type, you know, so you can type in Japanese um, as opposed to English. I'm not sure what you're asking exactly, but maybe if you want to PM me later, I can give you clarification on that. And if you have any questions about any of this, 
post it in the subreddit and I'll get to, I'll answer it. You know, or PM me in, in Reddit. But um, and also just really quickly, if you're wanting to go to the Japanese website, it's .co.jp or .jp. That's how you get to the Japanese website. So just an FYI. So like, if you want to search for things in Jap Google Japan, uh, it's google.co.jp. So just an FYI on that. So anyway, that's pretty much the uh, the resources lesson, and we're almost out of time, which is uh, too bad because I thought I was only about halfway done. But oh well, we'll just keep going, and hopefully I can get get through a lot here. Um, I think what I'll probably do is just well, well, we'll be all right. So. Uh, hiragana, hiragana is one of the two phonetic alphabets of Japanese, and by phonetic alphabet, I think I mentioned this last time. Obviously, reiterating this, and I know some of the, for some of you this is like really easy, but uh, hopefully I can give you some good tips and make some stuff you didn't know already. But uh, you know, the phonetic alphabet of J Japanese, the sound system, uh, the letters by themselves don't have any inherent meaning. It's just like the ABCs, and you know, a lot of introductory courses in Japanese and beginners of the Japanese language use romaji, which is uh, use romaji to read early Japanese and to learn words and vocabulary words and stuff like that. And I would highly, highly recommend that you do not do that. Um, I mean, really, it's just kind of like a waste of time in my opinion. You're just reading things in English basically. It's like reading Nissan or Toyota. I mean, you're not really learning Japanese. I mean, you already know how to do that. You already know how to read the English to alphabet. So if you're spending the time studying, you know, you might as well just learn the, the alphabet as soon as possible and, um, you know, just start exposing yourself to it and, and trying to make it like second nature because that's really what it has to be in order, you know, to, to become proficient. And so, you know, if whatever textbook you're using or whatever is telling you to use Romaji, then you may want to consider you know, changing resources or something. But again, that's just my opinion. So hiragana, um, it came from kanji. It came from the Chinese characters, which is what kanji is, the Chinese characters. Originally, there was no uh, phonetic alphabet. It was just like Chinese, where all the characters um, had their own meaning. Eventually, some kanji characters started to have phonetic meaning, and they would just use them in phonetic instances. but it was really ambiguous because only a few people knew, were like really literate and really knew all the kanji so they kind of knew what kanji they were using for what sounds and it didn't really matter you know if they were if it was easy to understand for the masses because the masses can read um, so eventually it had to be uh, standardized so that it wasn't ambiguous anymore and that was when hiragana was born which is the really really simplified kanji and they don't really, a lot of them don't really look anything like kanji anymore, but um, if, you look at the, if, if you look at the history of it in the charts, uh, it actually did come from kanji, and it's like a really simple cursive form of certain characters, and it's really kind of an interesting history of the language if you want to study it. Um, but, you know, this, the, the tip that I'm about to, to share with you is really goes for the, any part of the language beyond just hiragana, but, um, you know, I found that to learn new words and new symbols and new ideas, it's best to avoid like monotonous repetition and try to associate things with, you know, interesting facts or certain events or certain things that pique your interest or, you know, um, just something that makes it stand out to e that makes it easy to remember. And um, so I really think that for like memorization drills, um, you know, I would recommend that you get some graph paper because all Japanese characters should be written in a square box and, um, you know, reference the dictionary and try and write, practice writing them because it's important to know how to write them, but, you know, don't memorize them by writing them like a hundred times. I, I wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend, you know, going onto a Japanese website and finding a character and being like, oh, I should learn this, okay. And then when you see it again, and then you study it for a few minutes, and then when you see it again, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, I know that, and you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna be like, man, I know I studied that, and that that whole 
event of you knowing it and then forgetting it and then knowing you should know it is that that catalyst for you to never forget it again because um, it's just going to be that that situation that I was talking about where um, it just like stimulates your learning in a, in a better way I think so um, I, this might be kind of a vague way to explain it but you know just just dive right in and expose yourself to the language and you'll start seeing things repeat themselves especially these phonetic alphabet characters and uh, you know and it, you'll, it'll start to become second nature and uh, you know also I can't stress enough the importance of saying these things out loud you cannot just read them and say them in your head and, and expect to learn them if, if you want to become proficient in speaking especially and listening because it's just not the same just trust me you have to speak them out loud you know over and over again till it's just like it's like nothing you know like saying it like nothing and um, you know hopefully um, you guys have been following my recommendation of studying and learning language the, the alphabets uh, already and I think a lot of you have it seems like a lot of you are motivated obviously or you wouldn't be here already but um, you know but I wanted to wanted to talk a little bit about um, some of the actual aspects of, of the alphabet, and so I'm going to go ahead and go into uh, a screen share again here and show you a few things. So. Uh, excuse me, one second here. Am I still up? That's not what I want. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, we're still good. So, um, I'm not gonna go go through every uh, every letter, but you know, because on on my channel there's one where I pronounce the whole Japanese alphabet, and it's actually incomplete. I'm gonna remake it here soon. So if you're wanting a reference for the, the way that all these characters sound, check out my channel in the next few days. But um, I'll be it'll basically just be what I'm about to talk about, but extremely in depth. And um, or I may well I don't know we'll see. Just just keep an eye on things. But you know obviously you have the uh, the basic symbols and you know there's a few tricky ones in here that you kind of have to learn like chi. Um, and tsu, you know, it's not just a two, it's a tsu. But what I want to talk about really right now is the fact that you have the basic characters, which are called the gojuon, or the 50 sounds. And then those can be kind of tweaked and expanded a little bit with just a little bit of uh, alteration as far as how they're written or read. And so what I mean is this ka, this is ka, and if you add a dakten or uh, a voice marker, it's actually called uh, a diacritic. Is the actual linguistic term. Um, and this, there's actually going to be a document on the useful documents about all this. But uh, diacritic, so it changes from ka to ga. And so you can see. The little two lines, ah, the little two lines there um, above the symbol to the right make it a voiced. So it changes from ka to ga. And if you're not familiar with what a voiced consonant is, then that's a linguistic term. But it basically just means like your 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 throat vibrates when you say it. Is it's just about the way the the, the air flows flows through your uh, mouth, but. Um, it changes from ka to ga, and the whole the whole ka line like ka, ki, ku, ke, ko changes from ga gi gu changes to ga gi gu ge go. So when you add the diacritic, it changes the entire you know consonant structure of that line, and that can be applied to the ta's. Ta's become da's. Um, it can be applied to ha's. They become vas, or and the and the ha's are the only one that the ha hi hu he ho line is um, the only one that has the 
the Handakten, which, or no, I'm sorry. I forget if it's, which one's which, but, uh, oh yeah, the Handakten, which is, as opposed to, this is a Dakten, and a Handakten makes it a P, so Pa. See, it's a circle instead of the two lines, and uh, so that's Pa. So that's one way that uh, the language can change. So you, even though you have the 50 basic sounds, the Goju on, there's a few extras with the, the voice consonants. And so you definitely have to learn those. They're huge in the language. They're everywhere. You can't get around it. Um, another aspect of the language that you need to know is the digraphs, or uh, yon. yon. Um, and these are when you add, if you're familiar with the alphabet, you know that the ya line has three. Instead of ya, yu, ya, yi, yu, ye, yo, it's just ya, yu, yo. And um, these can be a regular size character and have their own sound, like ya, ya sai is vegetable, ya sai, or yu gata is evening. Um, but you can also add them to any of the E's, so like uh, D or she or he. You put the the y, Y's on the end of it, and it becomes like a sha, shu, or q, q, like that. So those are called digraphs, and those are really important. And what it looks like in Japanese, the the little the the ya symbols or the yu yo symbols become small. So like ya, oops, ya. See how it's a little bit smaller than what normally it would be. Um, so ya, hyu, hyo. So those are um, a number of more, you know, whatever, like 25 more sounds that really are already part of the sound system, but it's just a combination of two different types of sounds. So also very, very important to learn. Um, next is uh, what's called gemination, in, which is called sokuon in Japanese, sokuon. And I will have a vocabulary list of today's lesson with all these words on it, so you don't have to worry about writing them down or anything. Sorry, I should have told you that to begin with. but. Uh, Um, so go on. And what these are are double consonants. And so, like, for example, kata is shoulder, and kata is the past tense of to buy. So I bought it, or it was bought. So the pronunciation is what's important here, and it's written differently, but the pronunciation is kata as opposed to kata. Kata, kata. Kata, kata. So you kind of hold that that consonant down for just a split se second longer to change the sound. And um, if you know what the character tsu is, uh, you're going to have a little tsu in between the kata. So here's kata regularly. Kata. I should, I should probably put it up here. Here's kata regularly, and here's kata. Kata. Or just uh, cut that. So you can see that this two, it's not a normal size two, it's a little two. And that marks the uh, gemination or sokuon, katta, katta. And that's, um, again, the double consonant. And that's how you write it with the English keyboard, is with the double consonant. Um, on top of that, another one is the elongated vowel, which is like a, just basically extending the vowel. So like yo becomes yo, yo becomes yo, and um, that's not as common as, as some of the other ones here, but it's definitely something you have to know. And um, so yeah, just yo, and then also another important thing about the Japanese phonetic system is the uh, diphthongs or double vowels. So like yo, yo. Yo, you'll see a lot of the O's, and that can be really hard to di differentiate when you're listening to the language. And uh, we're running over here on time. I'm just going to finish up here really quickly. So, um, you know, if you can't stick around, then come back and watch the video on YouTube. So sorry, we're running a little bit over. I hope you guys don't mind, but uh, it should just be a few more minutes. So 
Um, and I'm kind of I'm kind of blowing through this, so sorry if it's going fast. But uh, you know, again, I'll probably post another video on this in depth and go through the entire alphabet one, one by one and show you everything that's possible. So look out for that. And also, one thing for me that was um, important to learn was how to actually what English characters to type in uh, on the keyboard to make these, you know, to write it the right way in Japanese. So actually. I couldn't really easily find any referent document to reference that, so I actually just made one, and that's going to be in the useful links document as well. Um, and you can so you can check that out and see, you know, for this character, for this uh, written character, what English characters do you have to type into the keyboard to do that? Um, which you know I think is pretty useful in my opinion. So check check out that on the useful links as well. Um, so. Um, you know, you can go online and find practice charts for hiragana and write it. Um, what I would recommend to learn it is flashcards. You know, that's really, in my opinion, uh, one of the most efficient ways to learn the Japanese written system with hiragana, kanji, katakana is with flashcards. And, you know, put, um, well, just with hiragana, obviously, it's just the char Japanese character on the front and then the uh, the pronunciation on the back, and um, you know maybe even a picture or something to remind you. Or um, and then I would make another set of flashcards with you know words, simple words like one or two or three character words uh, to test you know to test in a more random or random way. And also that'll help you start you know pronouncing pronouncing whole words as opposed to just individual characters because. Although, you know, it's important to pronounce individual characters while you're speaking the language, obviously you have to know how to kind of make it all flow together. So um, that, that would be what I would recommend to help you learn, you know, as opposed to, again, writing them over and over and over again, um, you know, make flashcards or, or, again, go to a Japanese website. So, uh, again, please please check out the useful links webs or document that's going to be have some really, really useful information. Um, Obviously, there's a lot of resources out there online to help you learn, and uh, you know, the more the better. So, if you have some recommendations, please let me know. And also, you know, if you have any recommendations on how the class is going or my teaching style, I'm you know an amateur, so I'm always looking for good feedback, you know, constructive criticism. I don't mind um, you guys, you know, being brutally honest with me. If you guys want to change the format of something, or you want me to talk about something else, or anything that you want me to change, like you know, this isn't. I don't care. I'll do whatever you guys feel like would help you. So, you know, definitely send me a PM or have a you know post a, post something in the sub and have we vote you know we can vote on it or whatever you want to do. Just I'm open to whatever. And also uh, keep in mind that right now I'm the only moderator for the subreddit. So there may be you know four two three four five six seven eight hours that go by before I like approve a submission and you see it just come up on the sub after you posted it. So I'm um, sorry about that, but I really. There's nothing I can do. I can't like sit there all day and moderate it. So hopefully um, we'll, we'll get some TAs to help me out with that here before too long. So um, for the homework tonight, or for the homework this week, um, I really couldn't. I'll probably I'll, what I'll probably do is come up with a document tomorrow. I I was kind of I guess procrastinating. I just kind of didn't have time to to make up an actual. I will have text-based homework assignments where you submit answers and stuff like that. Um, so I just haven't, I just don't have one yet for this session, but I'm because I was trying to figure out how I was going to do it. But, um, but you know, I would recommend that you print out, get some graph, go get some graph paper, and um, you know, practice writing some Japanese characters, and obviously learn the alphabet if you haven't yet, and go to a Japanese website and use some of these tools that we've talked about today, the dictionary and the the browser extensions um, to try to start familiarize yourself with the language and with the resources, so you can, you know, get get proficient at it. And um, you know, maybe find some website in Japanese and whatever you're interested in, and post a link on the on the subreddit. And um, you know, we can all kind of check out what you found, and maybe you can um, post a guess on what you think it's all about based off of your resources and. Uh, kind of the process you went through, and, and we can take a look at it and see if it is what you think it is, and and um, you know, just talk about it or whatever. So, 
Um, so yeah, again, just keep an eye on the subreddit. There should be some useful links and as far as Hidagana posted in the next few days. And um, that's pretty much all I have for today. Thanks for joining me. Uh, arigato gozaimasu. Minna-san, thank you very much. We will see you next week, and we'll see you in the sub. Thank you very much for coming, and uh, have a nice night. Oyasuminasai.